I know, dear viewer, that you are tired of the repetitive stories on YouTube. I have exclusive tales that will give you goosebumps. Let me tell you about John's adventure. John has been my friend for a long time. A true adventurous type, always up for an escapade. We decided to hit the road and explore Dongo Forest, a place renowned for its dense foliage and exotic beauty. So, there we were, hitting the road in John's RV. Kylie, Cody, Olivia and George were our companions, eagerly anticipating the journey ahead. The sun was shining, the birds were chirping, it was the perfect day for an adventure. When we finally arrived at Dongo Forest, we were greeted by towering trees and a sense of mystery hanging in the air. John parked the RV in a clearing, and we prepared to hike into the heart of the woods. Now, let me tell you, Dongo Forest is no ordinary place. It's like something out of a fairy tale, with lush greenery as far as the eye can see. As we ventured deeper into the forest, the foliage became denser and the air grew heavier. But we didn't hesitate to explore every inch of this wild wonderland. That's when we stumbled upon it. An abandoned tent, nestled among the trees like a forgotten relic of the past. The sight sent shivers down my spine. And there, in the midst of the tent, were dolls. Dolls of all shapes and sizes, their eyes staring into space. Doll heads were scattered around us, their lifeless gazes following our every move. Then there were the dismembered doll parts, arms, legs, torso, strewn about like a grisly jigsaw puzzle. I felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end as a chill ran down my spine. What kind of person would leave something like that out here in the middle of nowhere? And why dolls of all things? It was like something out of a horror movie, but John, ever the optimist, dismissed it as a prank, or perhaps the remnants of a camping trip gone awry. We continued our journey, but the image of those dolls haunted me every step of the way. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows on the forest floor, we decided to call it a day and head back to the RV. But as we retraced our steps, I couldn't shake the feeling. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of branches, made my heart race. By the time we reached the RV, darkness had descended over the forest like a thick blanket. It was a long, dark night. We sat huddled around a campfire, the flames casting eerie shadows on the surrounding trees. John, ever the adventurer, began regaling us with tales of his past exploits. That's when he mentioned the Goblin Forest, a nickname for Aokigahara Forest in Japan, known for its dark reputation as a place where people go to end their lives. As John spoke, a chill descended upon our little group. The thought of such a place, so shrouded in sadness and despair, sent shivers down my spine. It is said that those who enter the Goblin Forest often never return, as their souls are lost deep within the forest. As tension escalated, we began to feel a creeping fear overwhelm us. And then, from the darkness behind our campfire, we heard it. A voice calling, John, John. John's eyes widened as he stood looking into the blackness. Who's there? He called out in a voice tinged with curiosity and fear. And then, from the shadows, a large man with a long beard appeared, his face scarred from years spent in the wilderness. Hey buddy, he said loudly, wrapping John in a bear-like hug. John's face lit up. Liam, you old bastard, he shouted, relief evident in his voice. We watched in amazement as the two friends hugged each other and exchanged stories of their past adventures. As it turns out, Liam was in the woods with his friend, hunting. His friend had fallen asleep, leaving Liam to wander off on his own. Then he heard our voices and decided to investigate. But even as the two old friends reminisced, there was still a feeling of unease in the air. Liam's strange behavior, coupled with the eerie atmosphere of the forest, made us all nervous. Suddenly, Olivia, the pretty blonde girl in our group, let out a loud laugh that <laughs> echoed throughout the night. Liam looked at her with a strange expression before speaking in a tone that gave me goosebumps. How are you, blonde? He said, his voice unnaturally cold. We exchanged nervous glances, unsure of what was happening. Liam's eyes seemed to sparkle with an otherworldly light as he continued to stare at Olivia. It was as if something had possessed him, something dark and malevolent. Liam's behavior started to become increasingly bizarre. I mean, we've all had those moments, but this was different. He fixated on Olivia, unable to tear his eyes away from her, and every time she spoke, 
he would shoot her these intense looks that sent shivers down our spines. Olivia, being the intuitive person she is, began to feel uncomfortable. And when someone like her senses something awry, the rest of us take notice. John, who had always been level-headed, decided to intervene. He pulled Liam aside, trying to play it cool, telling him it was time to turn in, find his friend, and get some sleep. But Liam's demeanor betrayed a different story. It was as if he felt betrayed or something. He headed off towards his friend's tent, leaving us wondering what had just happened. We tried to shake off the unease, but it lingered like a foul odor. We all began preparing for bed, hoping that a good night's sleep would dispel the weirdness of the evening. But then, in the dead of night, we were jolted awake by screams and the sound of fists flying. John and George went to investigate. It turned out that Liam and his friend were brawling, both heavily intoxicated. The next thing we knew, Liam staggered back toward the RV, his hand clutching something shiny and lethal. Panic ensued. We knew we had to get out of there fast. We whispered hurriedly to each other, and without hesitation, we scattered like mice, seeking refuge in the darkness of the forest. Gunshots reverberated through the night, each one sending waves of fear through our bones. John tried to call the police, but his hands were shaking so badly that he couldn't dial properly. Nonetheless, he persisted until the call finally went through. The minutes felt like hours as we huddled together, praying for the nightmare to end. The next morning, as the first light of dawn filtered through the trees, John ventured out to assess the situation. What he discovered made our blood run cold. The RV, our sanctuary in the wilderness, was pockmarked with bullet holes. It was a miracle that none of us were injured. When sirens shattered the silence, relief washed over us like a tidal wave. The police arrived shortly after and scoured the area for any sign of Liam and his friend. It didn't take long before they were apprehended, and their reckless behavior finally caught up with them. Reflect. Ing on what had occurred, I couldn't help but shiver. Liam's antics were just the tip of the iceberg. Who would have thought that a simple camping trip could devolve into a nightmare straight out of a horror movie? John always said Liam was trouble, but none of us expected it to end like this. Enjoying the content? Subscribe now for more. I went on a solo camping trip to the forests, a few kilometers from my hometown. After setting up camp and eating, I took a short rest in my tent and set off for a hike. It was a usual hike, and the forest was eerily quiet, until I thought I could hear footsteps nearby. I could have just brushed them off as the footsteps of an animal, but they kind of sounded human-like if that makes sense, considering how deep into the woods I was, and how far from any real urbanization. It would definitely be odd to encounter another person there. I didn't go searching for anyone though, I simply continued with my hike. When I returned to my tent, the first thing I noticed was that the zipper to my tent was undone, and the door flap was open. Right away my heart raced at the thought of someone having been in my tent. I checked to make sure that nobody was still inside first, and then went in to see that my bag had been rifled through. Surprisingly, nothing was taken. Though I contemplated relocating, I figured it was pointless. Whoever came already scoped out the place and left, so they wouldn't have a reason to return. Fast forward to that night when I finally settled into my tent to sleep. A few minutes after getting into my sleeping bag, I heard a noise. The first time I heard it, I had no idea what it could be. But the second time I heard it, it sounded like a staticky breathing sound. I sat up and looked around my tent, and at that point, it went silent. So, after sitting up with my heart racing for a while, I laid back down and tried to move past it. But after not even having my eyes closed for 10 seconds, I heard it again. Some kind of grainy, staticky breathing noise. I started rummaging through my bag and found something I knew for certain I didn't bring with me. I pulled out a large, archaic-looking walkie-talkie type thing, and the static was emanating from it. I instantly associated it with the footsteps and whoever searched my tent, but all I could think was, why would they put that there? Just then, the static stopped, and there was a breathing sound once more coming from the big walkie-talkie type thing, and then, in a deep, almost unintelligible whisper, I heard the words, I'm not your cat. It's crazy how in just a couple of seconds your whole world can change, 
and how your whole body can become overcome with fear. I frantically pressed buttons on the oversized walkie-talkie until it finally seemed to turn off. Then I heard something heavy hit the ground outside. I had a choice. Do I stand my ground and protect my belongings and myself, or do I make a straight dash for the pickup truck? When I heard something else hit the ground right outside the tent, I chose the ladder and made a run for my pickup. I left behind my tent, my sleeping bag, and other equipment. But in reality, none of that stuff really mattered when my life was potentially on the line. For all I know, it was some kind of trap to just get me to leave all my stuff behind for them to take. Or it could have genuinely been someone who intended to harm me. Once upon a time, I harbored a dream of spending a weekend all by myself in the awe-inspiring wilderness of Oregon. The concept seemed enthralling, surrounded by nature, far removed from the hustle and bustle of urban life. After nurturing this dream for years, I finally resolved to turn it into reality. Thus, I meticulously packed my camping gear, ensuring my backpack was stocked with essentials, and embarked for a remote locale recommended by fellow outdoor enthusiasts. Excitement coursed through me as I envisioned setting up my campsite by the edge of a pristine mountain lake, encircled by towering Douglas fir trees. The initial day unfolded precisely as I had envisioned, filled with fishing, trail exploration, and stargazing beneath the expansive Oregon sky. It was idyllic. However, little did I anticipate that my adventure was on the cusp of an unexpected twist. On the following day, a palpable tension seemed to permeate the once tranquil forest. I couldn't shake the sensation of being watched, and every rustle of leaves sent my heart racing. Nevertheless, I dismissed it as mere paranoia. As evening descended, I tended to the campfire when I heard approaching footsteps. My pulse quickened as I cautiously glanced up, prepared to confront the intruder. Emerging from the shadows was a disheveled man in his late thirties, his eyes tinged with fear. He divulged that he had been lost for weeks, fleeing from a group of pursuers in the woods. It was a chilling revelation, and though I felt apprehensive, I couldn't abandon him in the wilderness. Thus. I offered him food and water, which he gratefully accepted. As darkness enshrouded us, the man's paranoia escalated. He insisted we extinguish the campfire and retreat into the shadows, convinced that our pursuers were closing in. Huddled together in the darkness, fear consumed us throughout the night. The man recounted ominous tales of his relentless pursuers, asserting that they were drawing nearer by the minute. Straining my ears, I discerned faint whispers and snapping twigs in the distance. Suddenly, a group of figures emerged from the trees, their flashlights piercing the darkness. The man beside me froze, terror flashing in his eyes. The intruders drew closer, their voices low but laden with menace. We knew we had to act swiftly, urging the man to flee deeper into the woods with me. We spent the night on the move, hearts pounding, senses heightened, convinced we were being hunted. At dawn, we cautiously returned to the campsite, only to find it ravaged, our gear strewn about and destroyed. The man insisted it was merely an attempt at robbery, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something more sinister was at play. We decided it was best to pack up and leave, unwilling to risk another encounter with these shadowy figures. As we departed the remote Oregon wilderness, I couldn't help but ponder what had truly transpired that fateful night. The memory of that harrowing camping trip would forever be etched in my mind.